Hi. Hi there, Jacqueline. How are you? Hey. Good. Thank you. And don't worry about the internet connection. Everybody has issues. We've all been going through this. It's normal. Oh, no, no problem. No problem. Everything's good. I'm so just I'll start with this. Let's do this. So this film is engaging, entertaining, it's emotional, and it's empathetic. I call it the four E's. And for movie reviews and more, that's the best rating that you can get. And the reason why I like that, because I see a lot of people going through what you were talking about. And Russell, I loved how the work was just sitting around the table. That stuff is engaging to me. Talk about those things. Jacqueline, do you want to start? Go ahead, go ahead. Well, I mean, I think, I mean, it's a great compliment to me to hear that, that it's engaging, you know, because one of the, one of the things I'm always worried about in diving into this movie was that just this conversation of the kind of static nature of the, you know, the, it's in one location around one table with just two characters was going to be like, you know, really boring for people. And it was, I was going to lose people. And so the, the real compliment is always when people say, I never felt like I was stuck at a table. I was into it for the whole movie. So that's, to me, that's like one of the highest compliments that I can get for people who've seen the movie was that it, it kept them engaged. And I'm not used to being thrown off by that. And, and the reason, one of the reasons I liked it because it was a real conversation to someone who was a mature, established actress and a legend at that point. And they're going through this. And I see a lot of my friends going through this. And it's not fair, nor is it right, but it's part of being where we are right now. And, that, and I don't like that. So that's why I found it engaging and emotional at the same time. Yeah, it, it's, a, it's a journey with ups and downs, ups and downs, just like, you know, life, but within, it's a, in this business, it's a lot of tragedy. There's a lot yeah. of tragedy, really a lot. And you can't see it coming. I mean, I can see it coming in people. I've been here a long time. I see it coming. I see the, the early, the early fall-offs, usually based on drugs and alcohol. Yeah. And, um, and then the whole, the ego, the, the narcissism and the, that empty journey. So the, lots of very very talented um, and interesting and intelligent people are in this business with so much to give. And of course, the journey to find the part where you can give what you have to give is a lot is a very difficult one. Uh, that's part of my gratitude. Speaking just really for myself, this is, is definitely one of the better parts I've had in my life. And I've had lots of um, roles in lots of different films with lots of very great directors and stuff. This role is just very full. And Russell, talk about this. You took someone who's already been established, who's world loved, you know, you know, around the world, but you made that character like everybody goes through this no matter who you are. You just don't always see that. Talk about that aspect because it's really important. The sort of like relatab relatability of kind of Rose's struggle. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, every life and every career has all kinds of ebbs and flows and ups and downs. And I think one of the, one of the kind of tricks of the movie or one of the things that the movie kind of does is even though they're talking about movies or they're talking about certain artists or they're talking about Cezanne or Ala Nazimova or whoever they're talking about, it's really the context of how they're talking about these people that is really universal. So you don't have to be super familiar with, who Lauren and Rose are really discussing or the movies they're discussing because the, the way in which they're talking about them is really relatable and human and, and universal and the passion with, with which they're talking about these topics is, is really what's important, not necessarily the topic itself. I don't know if that answered the question. Yeah, it does. And Jacqueline, you, you reminded me what I always tell people, it's a marathon, not a sprint. And I say this to a lot of people who are younger who want that fame in their early 20s, I'm like, if you get it in your early 20s, you gotta make sure it lasts. It's better to get it as you're maturing because you've gone through a lot of life lessons, right? You know exactly what I'm talking about, right? Well, you don't wanna get the, the, the role when you're not ready for it also, you get, you know. When I first started, this is just going back, I, I got, I, I was um, 21 or 22 in London and I came up, there was a role of, Roman Polanski was looking for an actress, an unknown actress, and he tested me. His producer tested me, and then, they, then he tested me. And thank God I didn't get the part. 
Thank God I didn't take part. I would have completely messed it up. I got a little small part, which gave me an opportunity to be on set and to watch what was going on and how a movie was made. But I, I people say, oh, wouldn't that be great to do a great movie with Rome? And I said, it would be fantastic to do a movie with Rome. But at that moment, this was really all I could have handled. I had no concept of what that woman, that Catherine, and Catherine Deneuve, that Francoise Doliac, who played the role in the end, who was a professional actress, it was the sister of Catherine Deneuve, and she was a wonderful actress had a sophistication that I couldn't have brought forth. And there's no, Roman could not have, I mean, a director can make you do things that you don't know you can do, that can happen. Yeah. I mean, torture. And, and um, so, you know, you only, as I always say, you're only a virgin once. Be careful what you're doing. Well, I like that one. That's pretty good. Yeah. So, you know, don't blow it on something. And then just, you know, find roles that, that have to have humanity in them and don't do things that you, you know, you're going to be just fine. Disc- you, don't, you don't approve of on some level of either morality or your own style or whatever. Don't, you know, not worth it. Because they'll haunt, they'll be there forever. <laughs> you know, you just, yeah. and you, you know, you've got to hold your head up. You've got to hold, even if it's small and if it's quality, go for those. Learn slowly, you grow, and you get to watch how people are. And you get the longer you have to watch the observation of human nature and the world, the way the world is, the more you have to bring. Yeah. You don't have much to get bring at twenty. Usually, most people don't. Have Some people do. Hey, Russell, talk about this. How long did it take to make this movie? Because I was curious about this. You mean the actual shoot? I mean, we yeah. for thirteen days. And, um, you know, it was each sort of like segment of the, or, you know, each act was a, was a three day shoot. So we had nine days in the restaurant to shoot those, those really the big chunky part of the movie. And then the other four days were taken up with all the sort of smaller things that are happening throughout the movie, like the restaurant scene or the, the scene in the warehouse or the auction scene and that kind of stuff. But really the, the, the main corpus of the movie was about nine days three days per section. And that- the way we scheduled it, I mean, we, we were doing our best, I mean, this might be too sort of like movie making technical, but we were doing our best to give Jacqueline and Kelly a lot of time in between um, the acts, as much time as we could so that they yeah. could sort of refresh and get really up to speed on what they were gonna do in those three days because it was so much dialogue. You know, it's basically about 25 pages um, a section. So we would schedule like this three day shoot in the middle of the week, like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, so that they could have off Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, you know, to have to catch up. Jacqueline, there, there was a lot of dialogue. And so that's the, that's the thing. How did, when you saw this script, what really did you like about it? That's I what just I loved it. Know. I loved it. I loved the detail of it. I felt it was incredibly, incredibly well written. And I felt so much for this people and the situation and the admiration that they gradually get for each other and the friendship that grew. And then the sadness of the end, you know. Um, I, I didn't know if I, I just thought, God, I, would, I mean, I would love to do this. And it was, came at me sort of via, I, I'd met Russell um, socially and knew him a little tiny bit. And I thought he was very charming and, I was pretty astounded by the writing in this piece. And I said, this is going to take a hell of a long time to learn to be able to really incorporate it, really. I mean, learning is one thing, but living it, fine. I mean, those processes would have to be taken uh, seriously, which is how does it become, how do you make it yours, you know? And, um, and I knew that it was going to be short, short amount of time to do it. And you no know, luxury no luxury things, padding anybody out, no, you know, basic, very basic. And I don't mind basic, I think it's fine. I've done several films that were done in a relatively small budget and with very little time. And I, I, I like going fast, you know, I, I, when I come in in the morning, I know my lines and I want to do it. So if you can do it quicker rather than spreading it out all over the place and taking lunch breaks and God knows what, which you have to do, of course, of energy. But I like, I like it. 
because often you know you, you when you're doing a page or two a day or three pages and you get so tired sitting around and waiting and waiting and everybody oh it's just awful i mean unless you have a very large part if you have a large part well then but if you're on the film where you have a medium part or a small part and you have to hang around it's, it's killer because you don't have the energy when you get to the moment you know yeah. Nobody knows how hard it is to do nothing, to sit. And if you talk to everybody, you talk to everybody, you give up your energy, you do need to serve. So I used to, yes, I would be, however, the crew, I love the crew. I mean, it's just, they were so supportive and I was such great friends and all that and the, and the food tray and the whole thing. I mean, by the time I got to me, I was half asleep. <laughs> I could cover it, but Maximilian Shell said to me, well, Thing. Good thing to do when you're not working, go to your trailer. Go to your trailer. I said, but I want to talk to everybody. He said, just go and conserve your energy. Me a while to, to pick up. I then <laughs> try and go to the trailer if it was anywhere visible, not too far away from the set. Which is that's one of the nice things where you grow in the business. You got your trailer gets slightly closer to the set usually. That's funny. <laughs> Yes, so you get closer and closer, and then one day you maybe set, which is hilarious. <laughs> and you have everything in your trailer, you know, you can win the principle. But of course, you haven't got the concentration to, to go into your trailer and really use it. I mean, you don't want to cook there. But you could sleep there. You could probably watch television or something. But they're all, as you learn to business, it starts to distract you from what you're supposed to be doing there. So you don't do that either, really. I mean, don't need those things really much. You need a private place to think, not a big trailer. Russell, when she said yes to this, what was your first reaction? You know, I don't really remember, um, you know, I, I don't really think it was a, I don't think it happened that way. I don't think it was just sort of like, yes, we're doing it. I mean, I think we talked for like, we had many conversations about it and she asked me lots and lots and lots of questions. And then it just became like, so what are we shooting? I mean, it wasn't really like, or who's playing Lauren? It, it was never really like that definitive. It was more just like, we just started talking about it. And, and you know, how, how it all came to be was sort of organic that way too. Like I was writing this script. I had dinner with Jacqueline and a mutual friend. And she like started being Rose right in front of me. I was like, this is the character I'm writing. She started talking about her life and the great things that happened and the sad things that happened and just telling stories. And I was like, oh my God, this is, it's right here. It's sitting right in front of me, just what I've been writing. This is so crazy. What I've been writing for years at that point, you know? And so then I sent her the script and we met and we talked about it. She asked me lots of questions and I don't remember a moment of like, getting the call and somebody saying she's in. I don't, I, I don't remember what that, what that felt no, like. No, I don't either. I don't think it was, as you say, it was a gradual process. But when I read it, I wanted to do it immediately. I wanted to do it. But then I went, you know, fears of could I do it? How would I do it? It's quite a handful. And I needed time. And I also wanted to know who was going to be in it with me. Because God knows it's important to have the right partner in this kind of thing. Yeah, and that casting was so important, you know, because that's that's the whole the whole thing, the whole movie. I mean, every movie is to an extent about the casting, but I think this one, the bar was a little higher than even most. And the result of it was really, he was really, really wonderful to work with. He was, we were both in each other's corner, we really were. And, you know, and I, I really feel like I experienced him really deeply. And, um, so the scenes were painful in a way, pleasurable, but painful, especially towards the end. Yeah. The feeling of, um, yeah, I mean, in the way he listened to me in the character, gave me the possibility to express a lot of things that I probably hadn't said before, that I could really speak to him really honestly. The fact that he listened so well, and then it took an interest in him, but I also got to give him my, my power, my history, my, what I learned. And that was a great fun to do that. I mean, to do that to somebody young who's starting, obviously you don't want to overload them, feel like they don't know anything, but 
he obviously, I admired him in the beginning. I came to meet him in the first meeting, full of admiration and enthusiasm, and and probably hadn't been seeing many directors for the project. Point that my career was going badly. Probably, I mean, she walks in pretty jaunty in the beginning, but I don't think she probably felt very jaunty. You know, she'd had a few bad years. But I looked at it this way. I looked at it. Your character is going through what a lot of my actor friends are going through now. I will never be an actor. I will never be that director. I will never be that screenwriter. My job is to help get that word out. I'm promoting when I see films because I'm used to picking films at a film festival and I'm used to doing all of these interviews, things like this. My job is to get that word out. But when I see what you two have done, I'm happy to see this because this is what everybody is going through. And it surprised me. And I'm not used to being surprised by an independent film. I was truly, truly surprised. And that's a sign of good right, work. Well, tell me in more detail. Tell me what you mean you were surprised by what? It caught me by surprise. I was not expecting to see this film being engaging like that, being emotional. It totally caught me by surprise. And I'm used to picking films for film festivals. I'm usually getting those gems sort of like what Roger Darling does at Santa Barbara Film Festival. That's why I like this film festival. This is my Sundance, is Santa Barbara Film Festival and where I am in Beloit, Wisconsin. That's why I like this. The films that they pick are some of the best in the world. And I love that. And I'm so happy that you guys got in there because this is, gives me the opportunity to tell people about this movie. And I like that. Yeah, oh, good. That's nice to hear. Thank you. Last two questions. Roger, what do you got coming up next? And what do you want the audience to get out of seeing this movie? Coming up next, you know, Sorry, I Russell. <laughs> yeah, I had Roger on my mind. Sorry. That's okay. That's all right. I, I don't. <laughs> Coming up next, you know, I really don't have. I know this is like the everybody always can't wait to talk about what they have coming up next. But the truth is, like, I don't have anything cooking, and I think I'm right now in this period of like putting stuff in the soup pot and then seeing what comes out. So I'm just gonna like I'm kind of allowing myself to just like experience things right now and like yeah travel and see films and enjoy whatever happens with this movie and just expand my brain a little bit. Cause I, I don't really think I have anything great to do. And I don't really want to do something again until I'm ready to do something good. So yeah. that's the, in terms of the what's up next, you know, I don't really have anything. And then I think um, in terms of what I hope people get out of it, I mean, there's kind of a great life out there of kind of artists of sensuality and conversation and love and, you know, working together. And I think to me, that's one of, that's a great feeling. And we've really, the past couple of years have been so hard on people in terms of losing all of that, you know, losing the ability to have an amazing meal where you love every bite you're eating and you're being served and you're talking to someone who's interesting. And that's, that's what, that's a beautiful, wonderful thing. We, we haven't had that. So I think that that's going to be a great pleasure for, for people seeing this movie is being reminded of how wonderful life can be that way, you know, in such a simple thing as having dinner with an interesting person, you know? Yeah. And then you young lady, <laughs> those people who may not know your filmology, talk about a couple films really quickly that they should go back and study what you are to where you are today, because what you've done in your career, can't be duplicated. Oh, nobody's, nobody's life can be duplicated. Um, well, probably rich and famous. Um, well, people, I think um, comedy film would be a uh, film with Del Mondo, probably. Um, what's it called? In, it's called Le Magnifique. I don't know what it's called in, in English. I can't, I'm not sure what the English title is. Um, Under the Volcano is a good film. Yeah, John Huston movie. Um, it's quite a few that I that I like, but um, I liked on a movie I did with um, with Ella in with what Adel Ferrara. Let me see what was the name of the film. I love New York. I love New York. No, no. Welcome to New York. That was a interesting I'll, character i'll put in the pitch for the sleepy time gal oh god yes the sleepy time gal absolutely the sleepy time. 
absolute sleepy time gown on top of the list. God, how did I? Yeah. Sleepy time gown. That is a that's a doozer. That is an amazing movie. An and amazing girl. It's the, the oh my god, that was a difficult one. This was absolutely brilliant script. Brilliant script. It took me a year to get ready for it. That's I'm so proud of that film. Oh God. Thank you for Russell having, you know, I just like yeah. I just thought awesome. I'd jump in because I, I yeah. Didn't... Yes, thank you. Thank you. Yes. I was always easy. proper too. I think the grass not easy to find. Really not easy to find. The trouble is those movies are not easy to find. Yeah. Well, it's important. And I always tell my actor friends, you need to go back and study film history. Go back and look at these performances of people. And again, mentioning these movies, that's why they're important. That's why I say that. Again, going back to being engaging, emotional, entertaining. That's why I like that. I want to thank you two for this because, uh, you know, you never know when you're going to see people again, you know? It's true. <laughs> that is true. Well, thank you for talking with us. Thank you. Hey, like I said, I like this film. Thank you, Jim. I like this thank film. You, Brian. Appreciate it. It surprised it. me, you know? And again, I always, always tell people, no matter what, film festivals need support. That's why I'm in Wisconsin right now. And if I go out with our 11 million views and counting with the stuff we're doing, I can convince people. But you can't force them to go to the theater. But again, go back if you're at staying at home, watch those iconic films that you made so far. You know, that's a good thing. I thank you for that. Thank you, Brian. Thank I'll you, send Brian. you the file. All right. Thank you, guys. Great to meet you, Brian. Bye. Thank you. Where will this? Where will this be able to? Um, I wanted to see what I look like. In my top, you see my I'm going to put it on my Tuesday night live show. Yeah, you look great. Great. You do look good. Bye. Thank you so much, everyone. All right. Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye.